It's Captain Hooter. Hello. Dzień dobry. Bon dia. Dobre je utra. Dobre utra. It is our third then. Good morning. Good morning. We look jump acting. Buenos dias. Hello. Everybody online looking good. Morning. Sawadee krab. Good night and dobro horanku. Bon dia. Como va? Habari a tu buhi. Good morning. What's happening, everybody? Hooter here, coming to you high and alive, getting ready to take a ride of a lifetime. And you know what? I was thinking about this game, the Epic Roller Coaster, as a perfect background game for today's special guest, Justin Duncan. Dude, this guy has been on a little bit of a roller coaster, but the best part is that dude is still riding high and he is one of the all-time legends in our industry if you know anything about cannabis tv or the munchies or glass porn <laughs> yeah this is the guy who is behind all of that and i was trying to decide okay what what possible ride can i have that will be appropriate for this man and it's this one it's called neon rider it's intense a nice three minutes and 40 seconds, only 131 miles an hour. That's nothing. Laughable. <laughs> Listen, everyone, this guy knows his shit big time. And you're going to get a little bit of a chance to get inside there. He had a car accident not too long ago. And so it's a little bit easier to get into his brain right now because he got a little crack in there. The good news is, again, he's had great medicine. He's had really good uh, 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 work with his doctors. And dude is doing really, really well. And you'll be able to see by just listening to him for a few seconds. You know, dude has got it going on. And he's brilliant. And he's got so many different interesting angles to this. And I was excited to do this interview. So here we go. Uh, I want you to enjoy the interview. And I think we're going to launch this bitch. Are you ready? Here we go. And uh, after we get it launched, I'm going to go into the interview, and then you can come back, and we'll finish off strong, okay? Here we go. Do I want anybody? I don't want anybody with me. No, no companions. Let's just go. Let's do this, bitch. Let's go. All right. We're here. I don't see anything happening. Uh, I think I have to pull this down. Uh-oh. Here we go. All right. Here we go, guys. I'm excited. Enjoy this interview with Justin. We're going to be back right after this. Hola, hola, everyone. Captain Hooter here. Once again, very high and very alive. And as I've been doing every week, picking off legends, picking off legends, picking off legends. And dude, another one of the all-time OGs, Justin Duncan, dude. How are you, sir? How are you? Very well, man. Very well. It's a little hot in Denver right now, but you can't complain, you know, when you wake up, have a nice wake and bake. And of course, I get to be on your show. I think it's the biggest honor I've ever had, man. Thank you. Oh, shut up, dude. Forget you. You have your biggest honor. You are such a, a like legend, legend. I, I'm going to show a picture of the wall that you're on that I use that picture. Of. Oh, please. Talk about fuck, dude. Come on. You know, what I mean? that's oh. like you could die tomorrow. You're done. True. And it is. And I feel like for me, I've just never been interviewed. I feel like a lot of the content that I do, like I, I hide behind my content so I don't have to have a face and it's nothing impersonal. It's just that I found that like on my regular walls, like I only reach guys and I was like, okay, that's cool or whatever. But I was like, how can I reach more women? So I was like, I figured a way to just take my face off everything. And I found that like I have 70% women following now, which is kind of cool. Because like being a guy, it's very difficult. So I'm try trying to write down all my notes and different content. So like the wall was <laughs> a friend of mine, Billy Blaze. He's uh, he's from Ohio, and like he has Cheech and Chong and Wiz Khalifa and Bob Marley and you know all these famous awesome people on this wall. That, and he puts me in the middle. <laughs> and I have to say, like you know, 
I've never been interviewed or recognized. I don't get <laughs> awards. I don't get any kind of love like that. I'm not like on social media getting like people like, oh, bro, we'll sponsor you. It's never like that. It's always about like, I'd rather just keep myself behind it because it's kind of cool like if you think about magicians back in the day like they do a trick and then like you know the person on stage would be bowing and then like the double would be under the stage i'm the double man i'd rather be under the stage and watch somebody else get all the shine and it's more enjoyable this way i can't even begin to tell you how much uh you know i i connect with this you know for the last 25 30 years i ran my own corporation that was a meeting and travel corporation and i was the one behind the scenes that did all of the marketing public relations social media first to earliest twitter accounts and you know four square and fucking had oculus real or not oculus <laughs> but the uh, uh uh the google glasses i had oh, google I glasses that. when they oh they were killer right so i was doing all this the marketing games and tricks you know going way back and again you talk about not necessarily being known by the the main public but those of us that were back behind the scenes that were watching what you were doing dude you were you were legendary status dude and uh Thank you know you. Can, can can you tell people about cannabis tv and and how that all happened and you know, yeah. OK, type. so Cannabis TV is kind of an interesting one because uh, Cannabis TV used to be called Cannabis. And it was a group that was the first group named Cannabis Online. I didn't actually create that one. What it was is a friend of mine. His name is Ben Heisenberg. Um, he actually created the group and he was getting tired of it. Like he's getting hits from Facebook nonstop and he was getting almost closed down. And he's just and it, we all know it, it's a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety when they take our shit down. So he was just going through all this stress and he's like, I'm tired of this, bro. And I was like, well, dude, I'll take it over, man, if you don't want it. And he's like, yeah, it's cool, man. So I took it over and I brought Joe Turbino. He's a, he's my business partner on cannabis TV. And we built that thing. I think it was at like 90,000 members up to like 336,000 members, which to me, I changed it to cannabis TV because Facebook said, you know what? Cannabis is now a regulated good. So you're not allowed to use cannabis as your name of your group or else you're not going to be searched. So I said, well, what about if I put dot TV at the end of that? And they said, you know what? That'll work. <laughs> it's art. You're now you're now in the yeah, you're right out there. God, man, well, it is. And I feel like it's the build. So like, I, I think that's how I started my career was just understanding that how I could build these things, these communities for people and make it fun and entertaining without having all the extra emotion tied to it, which meaning wow. like my personality being on top of it. Cause you know, people are emotional. I, I got in a, a, a car accident where I'm even more emotional now. So Ooh. I find that like, it's nice to take those things away. So cannabis TV was the start of everything that kind of taught me, like I wrote down notes of why people join, why people like that content. Why did people stay for a week? Why did people invite their entire friends list to the group? Things like those to, I guess, mean importance so I could write it down for later use. Yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day, I had somebody, um, it was uh, two, two years ago, tell me that I'm just, Facebook, I'm just a Facebook group. I'm a nobody. I'm never going to be in anybody just because I'm a Facebook group. So I said, you know what? You have a great point. So I'm going to make two pages at the same time. And I'm going to build them the same way and it's glass porn and the munchies. And now with those two pages in two years, I'm reaching 354 million people in two years. So, I mean, nowadays I, I look after my haters as they're my best. They, they were the ones that pushed me. So I got to say mad thanks to my haters that pushed me to say that I wasn't going to be good enough. So now that I am good enough to at least respect myself to say, you know what, you did something. Because why else would I be getting interviewed on shows and stuff, you know? Exactly. All right. Well, wait, while well, I got my pen and paper here. So how did you take that to 300 million? Go ahead. I'm okay. What's that? <laughs> I said, I got a pen and paper here. Now tell me how you got that to 300 million. Go ahead. Oh, 300 I'm, I'm million. Notes. All right. So <laughs> I'll give you guys a little bit of it because uh, mainly I teach classes now. So like I found that like, oh, um, dude, really? People wanted to learn classes. So I built it into four different classes. And like, you know, I won't go over pricing because I don't really like to go over that stuff. Cause it's like, I, I have, depending on each different person, it could be a different price. Cause you know, if somebody can't afford me, that's, you know, I got them, you know, I'll either like right. help them out, you know, and also twice a, like twice a year, I'll just take somebody that, that basically like an Uber driver. I had two Uber drivers this year that I just took to my side under my wing and I taught them for free. 
And now they're doing stuff on their own to where one Uber driver, he's monetized as Uber to where he has screens in the back and he has sponsors on them. And, yeah. you know, he just drives around and gets paid. And the other guy has a paddleboard website or a Facebook page that he just like got inspired to do pictures and stuff. And now he has a sponsor that gives him all the paddleboard equipment and all that stuff for free. And he gets paid just to do what he loves. So I, I think that, you know, like with the classes, it's an easy structure. It's just a long, like, basically here it is it's easy to teach but you have to have that fill in your cup to be able to just last because like for me it took two years to build this large following but i found i'm gonna teach i'm gonna tell you this it's it's i could probably just i'll give away a little bit of it but it's gonna be hashtag branding okay hashtag branding all right so that is my main ship so what it is is i find a popular hashtag on instagram twitter things like those where it's just viral and then I create that into a brand. So then if I was to say that I ran out of content, I can go find other artists that I can just say, hey, would you like to be featured on my page? I could possibly reach, you know, a million people with your content. You know, would you be, I'd be, you know, and in the, in the beginning, it was easier. You know, I just said, hey, can I just feature you guys? I love you, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. But it was something to where I could go to those hashtags online to find specific content. So I never ran out of stuff to post. I was constantly, you know, in this hashtag branding stage. And it's such an easy thing to do because, like, look at the company. Um, there's a Denver company called Dro. He created his brand off a popular hashtag. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, you know what? I did that. But I never realized they did that. And then I started focusing, and that's how the munchies in glass porn were created. You know, uh, uh, let's say let's say that there's a, 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 a the <laughs> – in in Nevada, uh, Lake Mead is drying up. One of the big stories was the Lake Mead drying up uh, uh, for about two weeks. It was it was everywhere talking about global climate change and everything. So, how am I incorporating Lake Mead bed drying up into my cannabis business so that I'm able to? Am I, am I understanding that the right way? Am I hijacking the hashtags, or are you flat no. out stealing them? No, nothing like that. I feel like there's not a steal because I feel like a lot of this stuff is is like the munchies. OK, people, it was a word and it was a phrase before it was ever a hashtag. I looked after things as like, why is it a hashtag? Why is this thing so popular that it became such an attachable thing to content that everybody puts on their content? Well, it's because it was something that people like I feel the munchies is something people are afraid to do. OK, because like the munchies is is a word that nobody I didn't see anybody that wanted to do it, because if you go on Facebook mm -hmm. and you say the munchies, their, their hashtag only has, I think, like uh, under a thousand people that have used it. So like if you go on Instagram, 15,000 people have used the munchies because why? Mm -hmm. Because it's a word that's not normalized. And that's my conditional goal is I want to normalize these words. And it was, I guess, that the hashtags I found that started everything. And now it's more over. I want to normalize these words like glass and porn on Facebook is a big no-no. Yeah. And I did it. And now I'm monetized through Facebook. And it's based on how it was built. So it's all like it was all how it was created was that the hashtag branding. But later on, it progresses into what do you want to normalize? Do you want to say something that you can't normally say? You know, and how do you do that is I built brands that Facebook does allow. And then glass porn, I can add in content. And eventually, if say when cannabis gets descheduled or something like that or goes legal, I'll have a platform for people that are edible chefs, for hotels, for anybody that needs to just get this kind of content out. So the Lake Mead thing would have to be a little more specific. You'd have to have something built completely around Lake Mead. It'd have to be, you know, like the people that are involved, you know, posting the videos of the people, you know, just posting like the community content that people are interested in, the news, the things like those. And you become a news media station for Lake Mead. And that's mm -hmm. how I would figure the branding would be the same as I would make something along those lines. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I see where you're going. Um, but if there's a way to tie it in, obviously, with the cannabis industry, automatically it's a it's it's an easier run to go that way right well it's it's hard to do that so like it's like i see a lot of artists that they'll get like a big following and then they try to convert their content to do something else so like mm -hmm. they'll be like you know what i've been a model for so long now i'm gonna do cannabis stuff and they see a lot of their content fall off because their followers that were built for the reason to see her as a model 
So like the whole position has to be built from the get go from the roots or else the people that are built from the roots, that's how your tree stays in the ground. You don't fall over, the wind could hit you. You got the strong people at the bottom holding you up and that's how it has to be built. So to convert content, you almost have to be doing it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And what are you smoking kind, sir? Um, I grew this myself. Um, I'm doing some uh, 100 watt LED testing lights that I was just testing myself to see how much you oh. could grow one plant with a hundred watt LED, because that's technically 300 HPS. So this is sweet. This is uh, Ethos Collective, which I'm sure a lot of people don't like Ethos, but I love them because uh, you know I like the fact of variety and certain things. I can find strains that are 50-50 indica, you know, sativas that taste really well. Like this one is a high sativa, but it's got like a nice body buzz with it. But sweet has like four strains that I can't remember. It's a lot. <laughs> You know, it's funny because uh, we were having this conversation last night and uh, we were talking about uh, each, uh, these are all connoisseur, you know, friends of mine that are smoke ridiculous amounts of the killer killer all the time. And we were talking about specificity is about um, sativas, about narrow leaves in particular. And like for me, I, I'm looking like for my, my gold star is something that gives me a shitload of energy, a ton of creativity, and it's focused creativity. So that I'm able I to stay stay on the same project rather than being scattered all over the place. Not that the one that that being that using the one that's scattered all over the place is a bad thing. And there's the time and place. But to me, that that gold standard is right up there. Have you? I mean, you've seen all of the, from where you are right now in Colorado because you're in one of the main the spots. Who's 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 the brand right now? If you could okay. go in and say, I'd want to go right in right now and this would be my place and I could take over and run it from there. Oh man, take it over. I, I feel like I, I could never take over, but in a, in a fashion of saying who the best is, the best mm -hmm. of the best, I would have to say there's uh, three. And I have to say three just because there's no one. It's hard to just Ooh. pick between one spot, but there's Verde. Verde is a living soil grow. And all the ones I'm going to mention are living soil. I enjoy things that are grown organically. It doesn't have to be 100% living soil, but like as long as it's organic. And so Verde is a great one. And then there is a uh, Hava, I think Hava Gardens. I don't think they're a dispensary, but they're an actual garden. It's an all girl owned grow. Like she, she oh. came from some other big grow that, you know, that didn't want, you know, that's like, hey, like we're gonna go some other direction. She started her own business. And now Hava Gardens is like, I, I tested it out for the High Times Cup for the solventless and i gotta say like it was the most drool worthy tasting extracts Ooh. i've ever had no till like you know to me i don't understand that until i got educated about it to know they don't throw their their soil away i mean just and the best part is, is the plant basically just gets everything from its soil but and then number three is of course 14er and 14er, you go out to 14er, you just won't be, you know, all their live rosins and things like that. And that's what I'm into lately. As much as I smoke flour every day, mm -hmm. I love the live rosin kind of the fashion right now. Everybody's into that live rosin and, and bubble hash. It, it's such an old tech too. So it's kind of cool. Right. And well, and it's weird because there's different vibes for it, right? It's like when I hang out with some of the OG guys, they're all sitting there with the big rigs and the blow torches, and they've got the whole table laid out, and it's a spread. And it's this is, you know, it's almost like going to a picnic in the afternoon or something. And all with some of my new dudes, everybody's using um, there's a brand new, yeah, holy shit. Um, a beautiful <laughs> little pipe that is the first one I've seen that actually looks you know, like distinguish, it looks cool. And it, it doesn't look anything like uh, what you would consider a quote unquote dab rig. And I've been calling for one of those for a long time. And when I saw that that last one, I went, oh my God, that's that's gonna be blow up the, the whole industry again. Well, see, those are the products that I enjoy because like when, at least the people that remember smoking weed like you do in the old days, we made all of our shit. So like you either had a friend that could roll joints or a guy that could roll blunts. And then you had a guy with a hookah or you guys had a guy with like a six foot bong and you guys would all like meet up on Saturday night and sit around this big ass fucking circle. And there'd just be all this weed in the center and it would be the best weed in the world, but nobody cared because we were all hanging out and like you had a joint in one hand and a, and a bong in another. And fucking that to me is community. So like when I see pieces come out that are like, that are a little secretive because 
I can't smoke publicly still. We can't just go out public. I mean, we're still going to get in trouble. So it's always going to be that sneak a toke. And anybody doing sneak a tokes, I fucking love it. Like, keep up. Yes. Thank you so much. And you know what? Uh, I If you go through my uh, Instagram feed, you'll see uh, the actual company now in the United States, they don't call it sneak a toke like it was when we grew up. It's called take a toke. And I love it. they sell... They sell all of them. I got to speak to the owner. He sent me a shitload of them when I was in Amsterdam on my last run. And I got to the point when I told people, if if you want to know my perfect cannabis day, I could do that with five of those take a tokes and start off yep. with my strongest, my strongest narrow leaf in the morning and finish off with the strongest uh, broad leaf at night and just have oh, it yeah. run down there. And that's your whole day. And well, and you know, cool like, you schedule it. You schedule your stuff out. It's like it's like yes. we all have our own little schedule, you know. Yes. And you and I both have the other uh, link together, which is all about stealth. I love to get high in places that I'm not supposed to get high, and you can only do that really like in Europe. Here, every single place you're not supposed to smoke, I have right. smoked in there. Made it a point. You are. To. This little bad boy right here, which I know you know very well. These smoke, smoke buddies, buddy. you have to have a smoke buddy and a take a toke or a sneak a toke. With those two things in combination, there is nowhere that you can go and you can't visit, no matter how impossible you would think. Uh, you can definitely get in there and enjoy yourself. The the That's thing about cool. the, the the smoke buddy, I think, as a matter of fact, you were on that very early, weren't you? When they first came out. Well, I feel like it's uh, for me, like, I don't know if I if I use that until later, because like for me, I was still using like uh, you get like a toilet paper roll and you get like some of like the dry, the, the, the cleaner for your, uh, for your dry thing. Sorry, yeah. my brain doesn't let me pick words I want, but you get me. Yeah. So like you get like one of those dry cleaner sheets and you stuff it on the end and you put a rubber band and that was my smoke buddy. So I feel like somebody took that idea of stoner like beginnings and made that into the smoke buddy so that's why i decided to own one but like mm -hmm. i mean i think that my favorite part about weed is like you know my hat as much as my brand is a, a leaf i like going to places that aren't legal and you know wearing it but like you better believe i'll be i'll be having my smoke buddy or like some kind of smell proof something like cartridges are my favorite just because i can get mm -hmm. live rosin carts and they travel well you know, right. but like travel well is, but I still like weed, which I think flower, you probably agree with this flower gets you higher than fucking dabs do. Dabs are like a short, like quick lived, fast, hit you in the face. Flowers, that longevity that you want, you know, like that all day smooth. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess like, you know, for me, I, the smoke buddy, it was just a hundred percent needed just because not everybody likes this potent cologne that we wear. Yeah. I love this okay, cologne so that I wear. Lots of stuff on there um, to cover. Let me get this so I can show you this. Um, one of the, uh, and it's a mess, but I'll show it. This is my Terp kit from the Tricom Institute. And I was able to, while I was just at the Canaduro event, I was able to whip out this right here. And this is called uh, all natural jack and nice. this is the actual terpene by abstracts pulled from dan harrer's dad's plant from his oh, house right so this is the actual stuff and they use the chromal spectrometry thing that basically analyzed every single element of that flower, that plant, that and everything, and then did a 360 degree full spreadsheet, broke it down into 400 different types of terpenes. And that is the actual smell of Jack hair. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, to me, Jack so, hair is like a, something I'll always remember. I know that okay. smell for days. But, but here's the thing. I was there with Dan, right? So I'm smelling this. And I tell him, I say, dude, I've, I've had this, I've had a lot of people smell this. And my wife, number one, says this is going to make one of the best colognes ever. A cannabis oh, yeah, cologne. That it smells so good. 
And while I'm there talking with him, he said, we're actually talking about doing some things like that. Uh, a room freshener, a room freshener. So you could just spray it and it has the fresh smell of, oh, fuck. I, I could see so many great pieces of business. Okay, that was the first thing. Now, we were talking about delivery systems you mentioned before this. Have you done patches? Um, patches I, I did to get off cigarettes. Yeah, okay. Uh, nicotine patches. Okay, you, you haven't done the cannabis patches. Uh, the cannabis patches, I find like I, topicals, I still play around like, but I, I think like, you know, with all the pain I had and like I went through cancer and stuff with my testicular cancer and all that pain, even putting that stuff down there, it helped. I'll, I'm going to tell you what, like it, it helped go from like a 10 to like a six, which on my scale was a lot, you know, it's really good stuff. I think the topicals really do good for like, you know, those, those hard areas that are just like hard to, you know, even patches for me are difficult because the areas I have to put a patch is sometimes difficult. So I think that I, I, I'm more swapped to the, the, uh, you know, the topical stuff. Yeah. Um, have no. you done the inhalers? Uh, um, the, the inhalers, the, like, yes, I have. And honestly, yeah, I'm going to give an unpopular opinion here, but like the inhalers with my asthma make my asthma, I get an asthma attack immediately because I don't think yeah. you're supposed to ever it like inhale oil that's cold, that's not vaporized into your lungs just because like that's just not correct. I just feel like there's certain techniques that, you know, I think that'd be more available. I think that, you know, if somebody made like a, a nasal strip that smelled like Jack Hare, you know, or like some yeah. Vicks that I could put on that was like terp related. Cause I, I'm a big terp person right now. Like, I feel like most people go shop by like, like uh, percentages of THC and this and that I'm shopping based on like terpenes and like, is it like a Meyer scene or, you know, like which one is it? And like, why? Cause I just like care of failing for me with my brain damage. It makes me calm versus mm -hmm. like some of the others, like Meyer scene makes me racy a little bit. So I, I enjoy to know what I'm using. And I think that like a lot of that stuff would be more enjoyable if I had it for colognes and like if you put it in like I don't drink but put it in like lemonade or something like you know that or sweet tea or something like that like I mean I used to make sweet yeah. tea for my cancer. And I mm -hmm. used agave syrups and stuff and like I gotta say like I used to cook my flour actually in my agave like not in a little net actually in it and then I'd strain it. And I actually got the, the terpene profiles from the flowers. And like, mm -hmm. so like when I used to make my butter, I found out that all I had to do was wash it. So like you take your butter and it's super dark. And what you do is you take it, dump it into a pot, put like a cup of water in there, melt it back down, put it in your fridge and let it condense again. And then every time the water is going to get clearer and clearer and clearer, and then your butter is going to get greener and greener. And then all of a sudden you might taste the super lemon haze that you put into that butter. So it's kind mm -hmm. of interesting to me to get flavor profile versus I don't care about strength. Mm-hmm. Interesting. You know, one of the conversations that's been happening here uh, in Europe uh, recently has to do with uh, THCP and THCO. And, Heard of those. Yeah, well, that's what we're hearing about it, but you can't get it. And I'm hearing from people your side of the of the pond. Uh, I've been, I've, I've heard both things, right? I've heard, ah, it's okay. And I had somebody else say, this is going to be a game changer. Is how well, game is ch game changers yeah. like this. I, I look after things a little different. Like I mean, I think that every, anything coming from cannabis so far has been just amazing. It's nice to see different cannabinoid splits and what they do. But I think the problem is, is we're testing them out on the public, and that's why the the people, the states, are coming after everybody based on that we're not really doing clinical trials. Like we should be doing it a little more like research wise, yes. like they would do it. So like the, if they come at us and say, well, hey, research clinically. It's not like this, well, hey, we did clinical tests with, you know, like 20, 30 people, you know, things like those to where we look after, like, instead of just giving it like, hey, you can go buy it at your store, and then anybody can go try a cannabinoid that might cause something, uh, an adverse reaction, because we know that sativas or things like that can cause, like me, I get really like, a, you know, like jittery and certain stuff, and I can't concentrate. So like, I think that there are adverse, and I'll say adverse, not negative, but adverse reactions mm -hmm. to different things. Not everybody's body, you know, chemistry of their endocannabinoid system is going to be the same. So like, if, if I ingest this joint versus you do, you might get a more like, you know, sativa ride, but me, I'm kind of getting both. So I think right. that like we should be a little more study wise on that stuff. And that's why it's not released as fast as we're seeing it. 
because I just I, I have to ask now. I don't know about you, but when I go to shows and I'm like and I'm a, I'm in the states, which out there I'm not sure if it's there yet, but out here when somebody passes you a joint, you have to ask what's in it. I have to ask, yeah. is that HHC? Is that fucking uh, THCO? Is that you know? And that's just the craziest shit because it used to be you just you go out and you smell weed and fucking you could go hit it and you just knew exactly what you were smoking. You knew that it's either yeah. going to be weak strong not taste good but it was still weed and you're going to get that same kind of comfy reaction that you know of so i just think that all these things people are making like weed was great before we started splitting everything down into atoms and shit. So I think that, you know <laughs> like seriously yeah. you know it's funny though that you know i just finished doing a can of portugal here in lisbon and uh i got offered a million different joints and and things and just not doing that always have my sneak a toke there's my little bad boy with me that I always keep with me no matter what. That. And and it's so funny because no matter where you go and you know this from all your events, a lot of times you're not allowed to smoke inside the arena or whatever. Where do you always go? The back door. Everybody goes out the back door and there's all your people are all out there in the back door. Everybody was there. It's like, oh, there you guys <laughs> are. Okay, hey, what's happening? Oh, okay, now we're here. And it's so That's funny. the first place matter. I go when I get to any event. <laughs> That's it. Got to go out the back door. And all my, all, that's where all the people are. Hey, have you seen anything? I mean, because you're on the cutting edge of everything, especially right there. Have you seen? Okay, let me let me tell you something strange. Or no, not please. strange. I'll, I'll tell you something that I, I found unique in doing all my interviews. Um, there was a, there's a, a grower who you know, who's one of the all-time great growers. His name is Soma. Soma oh, Sacred yeah. Seeds, right? Okay. So... When I first moved to Amsterdam and I started writing the Connoisseur's Guide to the Amsterdam Coffee Shops, I started going to all, you know, everywhere. And I heard all kinds of really trippy stories about him. And the, the story, the legendary story that I heard was that he took a tremendous amount of psychedelics, mushrooms, DMT, acid, everything all the time. And he peed on his plants. And heard that. Okay, and that that was how th what was the the little angle that he had that made his you know so immediately obviously I started trying to track down those cultivars, but I got a chance to interview him and I had to ask him you know I asked him I said dude did you pee on your fucking plant and if you did does it work and and he was very straight with me and he goes no no I never peed on my plants respect but but <laughs> what I did do is I have created an ayahuasca tea that I use okay. in oh water. There you go. Right. There you go. I've never, again, I, I'm always trying to track down what's different, unique, and unusual. Something that's better, something that's the next angle. And uh, that has really never left my head since we've been talking about it. And I've been trying to think how many people are really are doing that that we don't even know about or doing something of a different variation of that? Well, I don't know if you've seen that meme yet of like, it's like a, it's a person with the, their same face with a baby strapped on them with their same face strapped to them. And that's how they consider like people's cultivars or like secrets of what they're using for their grows or soil amendments or like things that they just found work. They keep them real tight. I feel like it's it's kind of sad because back in the early days, we we taught so much of each other because I learned from somebody just like I'm sure anybody else that nobody just started knowing to grow weed, but mm -hmm. or you had a friend just had a green thumb. Like I feel like it, it was an, it was a learned thing because you wanted to teach people so that it it kind of progressed, and that's my whole goal is progression in cannabis and you know just normalization, just some kind of like structure. Because mm -hmm. to me, like, it's, it's so beneficial to remember those times of like, you know, us going through, you know, just like the simple things like, but keeping things to chest like that, I think is a little rough. Like me, like if somebody asked me like, hey, bro, how'd you get all those trichomes on this grow? I'd tell them yeah. exactly how I grew it. I, I keep notes down to a T for the past, like, I don't know, 20 years I got, but they were on notes, notes for a while. Now yeah. they're actually on a notepad. And I, I keep them just so that like, hey, like if I top a plant and completely bend that fucker over and she cracks, did she grow? Yes, she did. And I wrote down exactly why, but it doesn't work like that every time. So I think mm. like even topping, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to waste the plant because back in those days, you didn't want to just like chop the plant and then it died. Cause like, it's very 
hard to keep the smell in and the, you know, he, you know, all that shit. So to me, it was all about first shot trying to get it right. So it took me probably, you know, years to get it. And even still, I'm still a student. I, I don't yeah. know everything. <laughs> But you're teaching and you're teaching some great shit, man. Your Instagram feed is is awesome. I saw your stem the other day that with the straw stem out of there. I've never seen the stock oh, yeah. of the box. That That's... was cool. I I appreciate that. I feel like my Instagram really is just a place that you'll see me be more personable to where I'll post like my photos and my grows. Cause if you go on my Facebook, you'll see that I don't do that because I have certain rules that I have to abide by. And as much as it is, I can teach anybody, like if you want to post cannabis on Facebook, I think what it is now is I have this PTSD because uh, Facebook had deleted my group three times and I found oh. a way to call Facebook and I got it back. So I, I found a way to call them on the phone and I actually called them and I was like, what the heck? Like I'm a person, like I deserve to know what's going wrong. What am I doing wrong and how can I do it right? And all of a sudden my group was back online and it happened two more times. And even still now I, I even have links that I can give people that they can contact Facebook and they can talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, you right, know, and right. they can put in special tickets. So like, if you're like, I had my ad account banned because I gave out Facebook's phone number on a podcast. I gave out their <laughs> actual personal phone, their actual concierge service they phone like number. That. And they, they didn't, but at the same time, I got it back because I, I, I've been teaching so much. I've been like, I do their programs with them. I've been working with the new meta creator program. So I'm teaching people mm -hmm. and like, I made the most money out of all the creators, out of all of them. And right now I'm, they kind of are teetering with my monetization because they're saying like that I, I do a little cannabis work. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, I still got paid. So, oh, well, I I've got a perfect, that, like, I got a perfect solution for you, and you've got the meta already part uh, dialed in. And I'm sure by now you're aware of my Hooterverse that I've got inside VR chat in the awesome. Oculus Rift. It, that that's you know I still think that this is going to be part of our future and part of oh. our our networking, our communicating, our ability to be able to hang out with each other. Oh. Um, I'm glad that you brought that up, brother, because like your your Huda Spear and stuff like that, like I, I think about the munchies in the future and on Facebook as being like, like you can walk around certain community like malls and like there's certain brands in there and say like Tasty's there, Food Beast is there, you know, the Food Network, you know, and or like Cannabis TV and they got all these different like it's on Clubhouse. You go on Clubhouse, you got different rooms you can go into that are specific. And then like you with your goggles, you can see the content and then you can actually physically click on links and it'll bring you, you to right those to those people's metasphere and things. So I foresee it as a good thing. It's just I, I just see it's a it's a like I I personally with my current work, it's so much like I, I couldn't like Facebook basically told me they're gonna do that for me if it ever comes about. So I just know that I wouldn't be able to function, but I really love like the Huda Spear. I looked you up and I think like, you know, Bobby's been saying just such great things. Like, I don't know if you guys, Uncle Stoner, yeah, yeah. drop the name, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, Bobby, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, he's been saying just like, oh, this Metasphere, man, he's inside it. He's, he's just dialing it in. He's getting everything set. So I think, you know, what you're doing is just so forward thinking that like, it's going to be something just because like, look at Clubhouse. Okay. Like most people don't talk about Clubhouse, but it was something that during the pandemic, all of us, a lot of us, like I, I, I got a whole new group of friends from Clubhouse mm -hmm. because I would be in rooms and we would be bored. We didn't have anything to do because yeah. fucking like uh, basically Facebook was broke because everybody's talking shit about COVID or, you know, Trump or like the politics and all this other shit going on. And it was just so much to bear. And I'm just like, man, I want to get away. I want to unplug. And I got on Clubhouse and it's so cool. You're using just your voice. And it was a beta fucking app like not everybody could even yeah. join in the early days which i had invited everybody i didn't give a shit <laughs> yeah i loved it but at the end of the day it's it's those kind of things that were community-based built because it was a need you know somebody saw mm -hmm. a need for we needed to talk more during this time that we were locked down and that's when i yeah. created my and brand we could the find Monkeys. each other yeah and we could find each other that was the <laughs> exactly. other thing is we in a much clearer path uh, all along the way um, tell me more about that. So tell me about the munchies. And I'm, I'm trying to think of, of, uh, uh glass how porn. I'm, yeah. Oh. And glass porn. Well, no, 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 no. I, no, I was thinking about, <laughs> uh, about uh, the munchies and about how I could incorporate that into a whole room inside my Hooterverse so that people could be able to go into the kitchen and just start stocking up on all of your stuff. 
Well, if anything, I, I feel like I, I built the brand mainly for the fact that I didn't want myself to be the main focus of the fame. I wanted to be able to use any photographer, use any uh, restaurant, use any glass piece, use like, so like all the people that weren't getting credited out in the world online for all their work. And like, I've seen brands get built by using other people's stuff with it, never crediting them. So uh, I started these brands to kind of break that mold for the glass industry. And I've been told I'm one of the biggest glass pages now, as much as there's, you know, ones with 2 million, I just know that my reach is built is beating those. Mm -hmm. And it's more on a community level. Cause like I, I just, but at the end of the day, I built these things to highlight others. So like now, like if, if when I do photography, like, yeah, I can do some food photography and I notice my photography gets paid more if I do it myself, but it's kind of cool that I get permission from all these artists and people. So I think that like, you know, when I built this, like it was during the pandemic and I got to say, I built the munchies because I had no food and we would go to the grocery store and I'm sure like everybody out there, nobody had food. You go to the grocery store and nothing that you wanted that you wanted was there it's like what you got and so um i created the munchies as kind of like a dreamland to go to for myself to make my my fucking own feed just better to just like have my own personal facebook feed just a little more positive so i had two pages so that's two pieces of content that'd be on my feed that would just make me smile and apparently it made everybody else smile too and it's been a building process but um i, I found that like is like most people don't know this but if you go on your likes like on your, like on a Facebook post and you click your likes, there'll be a bunch of invite buttons all next to those people that aren't a part of your page. And that's what I do. I spend all day long just inviting these people until Facebook says that's enough. And what the, and that's just enough for two days until the invites are done. And then I come back and I can go back to do it, building up. And it's just been that process of doing that so much that now, I mean, I have artists and I have fucking real famous chefs that follow my stuff and like i mean these are people that i look up to because they awesome. they're like famous like beyond famous like they even sneeze and they get a million views so you know but at the end of the day i, I found that my main goal is just like this build thing to kind of see like can i break the mold each time like with, especially with a word like the munchies how mm -hmm. can you just normalize a word put it in the public's eye in a positive light and that's how I've just been running it. And I, I run posts every four hours. So every four hours I'm doing content unless that content is doing better than the last. So like if it's doing, if say if it's getting more likes than my last post did four hours ago, I'm going to leave it up for another hour. Mm -hmm. And that's how the content is understanding where and when you pause your content. And then I feel like now if anybody looks up the munchies, like I keep all my numbers on my business card. I, I got a link like L I N Q thing like that I can track. So I put all my pictures up there so that people can use a calculator and actually prove that I've reached over 300 million people. And it's not necessarily for any other reason for myself to feel special, but so many people disbelieve when you say I'm reaching 354 million people. So I feel like yeah. the whole quotable thing is to make sure that my brands are positive and of course helping the food industry. So like I, I tell people now that like I'm 100% here to help the food industry to make sure to get people excited to go back out to eat again. And I mean, I get, I've seen people on my page plan trips and, they, and then I've seen the trips actually get completed and then saying like how much they loved or hated it, you know, whatever. But like I even have people now that call because I have my phone number on the munchies and you can call me now and I'll give you a suggestion of where I might go in your, your town. Just because people That's like what and, and I got to tell you this, the the way that the munchies how i pick food it's very cool i get really fucking stoned like un, <laughs> like unbelievably out of my mind stoned and then i get an instagram and then i start <laughs> flipping through like the, i look up the munchies or food porn and then the first thing i click on that's the one where i message that person and say hey is it cool if i feature this on my page and i used to say share but now i say feature and i find that they're always like yes I would love that too. Can you make sure you credit me? And that's why I built them was is to credit people. So at the end of the day, I think that it works well. The fact that I'm always crediting people. It was built that way. My roots that are at the bottom of my tree in the wind, those are the people that will continually make my content go viral because they just know that I'm not really in it to make money off them. I don't really like my monetizations are there just so I can travel to more restaurants. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
What about, uh, uh, I, I have I had personal interest because I have my own art gallery inside my Hooterverse there, so I'm able to show off my stuff, but I'm interested about, you know, you're showing off all your artwork and you have quite a bit. You've done some beautiful stuff, man. I was looking oh, at thank some you. of your things. Dude, well done. Artwork is What's in it? like at my photography or? Yeah. So how is, okay. I consider it artwork. Uh, well, I appreciate that because. I don't, I'm not a very artistic person. So to hear, so, hear this, you just made my day, man. Like, it's, <laughs> well, no, it's, no, I didn't you, know I was. You know, the stuff that I create, you know, is, is, is micro, uh, micro shots and then turning it artsy. Um, but the, the initial part of it is the same, which is you have to have the eye to see what's there whether it's already there or whether you're going to have to make it there, but you have to spot that in the beginning. And that's, that's one of the most crucial elements of being an artist. Well, just know I got lucky. All those photos are just luck. And I mean, to be honest, I'll, I'll tell like a part of like how, I, how my photography started because like part of it's like stuff that's probably not allowable on, on camera. But um, mm -hmm. I used to take pictures of weed that I grew that I, you know, had, and my friends would really, really love those strains more if I had better photos. So yeah. I found that like I was taking photos because friends would be like, hey, let me see what that looks like up close. Mm -hmm. And I, people would be shocked to see the cameras that I use for my content because I actually teach that as well. If somebody wants to learn how to do product content photography for a brand, like in the cannabis industry, you say like they, they like to do dabs and they want to get free dabs or get paid to do it super easy to do and the camera i'm using is like a gx7 like it's ancient it's a 300 mm -hmm. point you shoot i had somebody tell me i'm not a professional photographer because i use it but my trichome shots are used with a 61 megapixel on a macro rail but the, i find that those are one in the you know you can do those but every day it gets boring i like to see mm -hmm. like different aspects of like what it looks like if somebody could like pick up my screen you know, like they like grab the nugget off my screen. And that's my whole point of position is like, you know, how I do my photography is I want somebody to see like, you can pick that sucker off, you know, mm -hmm. but it's I, I appreciate the art um, comment, brother, because like what you do is an art. I mean, I hear that you're in a different country and like seeing that you're over like with Mila and like you probably know Jair and like all mm -hmm. the different fun people over there. Like it's been a bucket lister for me to get invited to go there and of course during the pandemic Jair invited me to come see him which as soon as I have the money I'm going but like yeah. see Mila doing the Dabadoo cups and I'm sure you're involved in that stuff and like everything that she, like I follow her because she's friends with me thankfully which I think that that's she's a she's a mogul for me I look as yeah. this huge person in my world I look up to her so for her to be a friend of mine is kind of cool and like you know most of my friends nowadays like even Garen Angel I, I, I literally only knew him as a person that I wanted to call to say, hey, can you sponsor my wedding? Because we got married <laughs> at the Cannabis Cup on 420. Yeah, and I, awesome. I, so, but yeah, it's interesting. So now I'm friends with this guy, you know, and like we're personal friends. Like we don't talk about business every time. We're like having friendly conversations. And these are the people that I used to look up to. So I think people in the world, if, if they just go after their dreams and their goals in the cannabis industry like don't be afraid because like now i rock yeah. my beard and my hat and pride like it's like a, i'm not afraid to put it away i'm not getting i'm out of my green closet i don't know if you heard that but people have said that the, <laughs> there's a green closet now okay so like yeah. if you're like in you know maybe a teacher and you can't talk about it they come out of their mm -hmm. green closet and they're talking about their use now i love yeah. that love that yeah yeah it's 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 uh it's gonna be normal the way it should be one day normalized you know, yeah i want yeah. it yeah exactly you know yeah it was very strange coming here and you know being an american uh i had been coming here for 30 years uh for cannabis cups and you know that's how i got to know steve hager and ed ed rosenthal and you know i i met jack one time the very first year i was here but uh chef Ugh. raw all those guys from the from the the crew but you know it wasn't even after I got here, I was here five years before uh, I earned the right to be able to be friends with Mila and earned the right. You don't get anything here. You, the, everybody tested the shit out of me, uh, especially <laughs> since was I was fun, in, though. Yeah, when you were edu the first educated, yeah. though. 
Yeah, I was the yeah, I was the first guy walking in saying I'm a professional interpreter, and they went really I love okay. that shit. Well, I love let's that go shit. to work. Just bring it you up, know? and it was like, oh fuck, man. I I I I had to I had to 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 toe the line, and uh, oh, I you know I didn't did, know like... I didn't know anything about hash, uh, which was my weakness. You know, I grew up in California, and hash was uh, almost non-existent. You just got a piece of hash, and it was something magical and you went and got a safety pin and you put it on top the whole rock oh yeah just like lit it on fire like... <laughs> suck it on the side of a table and you sucked it off the out of the glass off the that was the only hash i ever had so you know i had a big learning curve to learn there and uh, you know having mila the hash queen as your educator was uh you know phenomenal and i've learned so much from all of these people they're every single from top to bottom and and uh, i continue to just you know, now I'm I'm learning from people down in Huelva, Spain. Okay, Huelva, which is the closest to where I am in Portugal, which is legal but not legal. So if you're going to buy something, you have to go to Spain. You have to go to Spain. So there's a little city down in southern Spain called Huelva, Spain, and we talk about how you're constantly learning and innovating. They have a couple of the the social clubs there. When you go buy your cultivars, they have them listed: uh, narrow leaf over here, broad leaf over here straight down listing here's the difference it'll say something like a tequila sunrise uh sativa uh limonene uh blah 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 cured 20 weeks oh love that love the next that. one cured 16 weeks next one cured oh man anyway real no shit okay so talk about th the whole business is innovating all around right and you're seeing what and like i that's one of my favorite new uh discoveries of of, of something that i'm recommending you know start uh, talking about those cure times on your and and use it like they are as a marketing tool that's funny that you brought that up because like i just collabed with a brand in denver like uh, our stuff isn't released yet so we, we wanted to enter it in the cup first but we're basing it on longer cures and I think that like, you know, for me, like what it is, is like, I cured a homie's weed. Like I, I just worked and did media for a friend. He's the true Jedi grower at that spot. Like yep. what it was is I just kept shit in a jar at my house. Mm. And then I, I put his stuff in a jar from Honolulu. Cause I, or it was from Kona, from Kona, Hawaii. I bought, oh. I, I allegedly had some stuff from there here and allegedly. you know, whatever, but, um, <laughs> It was it was really good stuff. And so I put his stuff in there and he knew it was in there. It was Hawaii. So he's like, oh, bro, this smells amazing, man. I, if we had this here, we would own all. And I was like, guess what? That's your weed. And he's like, no way. Like, don't do that again. But holy shit. And, you know, it was a moment of like, it's, I'd rather show people instead of tell people like, hey, we should do a longer cure. I just cured his weed longer. And I smoke fat joints with this guy every day. Like I'd come to work and have joints ready for specific people of the staff because some people can't handle oh. like a four gram oh. five gram joint like i just i got one right here that i'm sure everybody's not watching of the cone, me not of the cone of gold <laughs> it's and it is and dude i look up to you like for like what you're doing to like be able to earn your right to be in amsterdam amongst the community there to me that's like a goal like to be it's like a goal having like a visa card in the stoner world like to where you can flip it out in any state and people just instantly respect you based on your pr your previous past but of course we couldn't do that because we don't talk yeah. i've yeah. never been like yeah. i think that social media like nowadays is interesting people say they're like oh bro like you're so big and stuff i never used to post my plants i never used to post my fucking stocks or anything that i was right. using it just i feel like i never knew if i was going to get my door kicked in you know and as much yeah. as we are little well, in denver you can still get your door kicked in. I mean, they can kick your door in any time they oh, want. You know, they're the police. I got permanent you know, that's PTSD. One of the things, I have to tell you, that's one of the things that I was just, again, we were just talking about that. Something that I've lost since I've been out of the United States. Um, you don't have to worry about red lights coming on behind you. you oh. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen here. And even in, I'm in a, a country where I'd say probably 20 or 30% of the people on the road are drunk as fuck all the oh, time man. you watch people you watch people hit railings all the time you'd never see you know they have to really do some damage and really have an accident for the police to show up and even Crazy. It, it's it's yeah i mean the the fact that you have the loss of that anxiety i recognize i was just we were talking about this in california the second that i landed lax 
as soon as I'm on my way home, I know that I can be pulled over and, and yep. shit could happen for no reason whatsoever. My entire life could change. Uh, whether, you know, unless I've got the pot brothers with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And clearly it just be shut the fuck up Friday, baby. Shut the fuck hey, up. I know, I know that part. I met those guys through Clubhouse. So like, I yeah. never knew those, like that's a different, like, and that, what the cool thing about those guys is, is like, they like abducted me at Champs out there and took me to their like high rise, fucking like top floor oh. smoking den and in, in, like in Vegas. And I've been there a few times because Mark is just like the sweetest guy and his brother, I got interviewed by his brother for Cannabis Talk 101 and great guy. Like, I just feel like he's just the badass. Like, you know, he's behind the scenes guy like me. He's not yeah. always on camera, but Stealth. you know, he's doing shit. Love that guy. But yeah, I big love up. Both that's what I mean. Oh, well, I think like those thing. guys, like to get pulled over though, the paranoia thing back to that, man, like that's gotta be the coolest thing ever. Cause like, I think in Denver, I lost a lot of that like paranoia. Cause you'll, you'll see like me, my wife, like I'll be in fucking King supers or some shit, allegedly blazing a fucking fat ass rip or something, <laughs> you know? And like, it's not like I'm blazing flour or anything to be in different. I'm just blazing a pen, but like, I've gotten to that relaxation where I've seen that meme where it's like, you get so relaxed where you're smoking your fucking vape in a target, you know? And yeah. I'm just like, you know, like, it's because I lost some of that paranoia because like cops out here, really, you're just going to get a ticket, you know, but I go a state over and it's like, I, like I go visit my parents in Texas, bro. It's still a felony, man. Ooh, like it's yeah. a big felony. Plus my mind. I don't know how Joe Rogan gets away with it. I, I know he's smoking a regular basis. Well, he just doesn't he's care. Some... I feel like yeah. it's like, it's like <laughs> all of got us. Enough money. ever ask for permission. And it's yeah. like when we go, like you were talking about the show and people go to the back deck. Do we ever ask the show to go use that back deck? Fuck no. Yeah. We all just go blaze there until we all get kicked out and then we go find another one, you know? So like it was exactly. never about being cool. It's all about just like, where can we get away with blazing? Like four joints right now. Cause you're at the show and you run into people you haven't seen in like three years and they're from Cali or New York. And we don't have interstate mm. commerce yet to where I can get weed from New York and in Colorado. So to me, that's like, it's like the whole aspect. I love still getting like asking for forgiveness instead of permission it is a hundred percent like like if, if like Cheech and Chong said like weed kind of has lost that luster of that dangerous kind of like you know risque taboo thing and now it's like all like tv and shit to where people buy from stores and now they're experts but I don't really care to ever be an expert because I'm not you know but like at the same time I've heard somebody say a master extractor master mm -hmm. grower and they're they're like younger than me okay i'm 40 mm -hmm. so like i think to be yeah. a master anything you got to be like doc brown in california he's like you know <laughs> 60 years old and he's growing like sun-grown cannabis and it's the best shit he just partnered up with like bentley and like i mean they, their name of their brand is terps man like to yeah. me that's an old school man and he doesn't even call himself a master grower you'll never catch that guy in an interview yeah. ever being the most humble like most like chill dude and like, mm -hmm. he's another cat I met on Clubhouse. Just like, I got to say, like, these are people that have never been on camera. Why? Because nobody wants to be on camera. Mm -hmm. We just want to get our message out. And that's the only ways that we find that we can get our message out. But the same difference. I'd rather go dress in a suit, go down to the courthouse and, you know, be educated on what I need to say to get them to change whatever the fuck loop, whatever they're trying to do to us. Because every week, man, like yeah. Denver has a regulation on, on dabs. Like, I mean, right now they used, they were going to do a 10th of a gram. You could only get a 10th of a gram. And then we, we fought and we got it changed a little bit, but I mean, we, you know, it's still a loss. It's like, like all these companies are, are going under and it's because yeah. they lost that, you know? Yeah. And like, I've seen like probably like 10 businesses for sale here. And I mean, I saw like one of the biggest chains in Colorado go down two of them, actually two of the yeah. biggest chains gone black market, black market, still booming. Well, yeah, I feel I was just talking about that the other day. Like uh, we were talking about like me and uh, Mike Colley. He uh, he owns uh, Get Seeds, something like like I think it's like one of those seed things. And like uh, we were talking about how much pounds cost in different states. And of course, you know, we, we had to be off Facebook because you can't be saying that shit. But right. at the same time, like I, I saw all the way down to like four hundred dollars on the low. And in Denver, like uh, like the weed prices have dropped so dramatically, at least on the recreational level or like or at least on the level of business to business. So if you're a grow and you mm -hmm. sell to somebody, all of a sudden the prices drop. But yet 
if I go to medical, like I, I'm still EPC, I can go get a pound and it's like, I think it's like 17, 1800 bucks, you know, versus like wow. they're, they're paying, you know, and that, that to me is, it blows my mind because <laughs> like in the taxes yeah. aren't even close. So like you go to Cali, yeah. they got 50% tax. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been interacting with quite a few people in different key spots, uh, had Mark Emery on, uh, who is actively buying for a legal uh, uh, market up there in Vancouver. And he said that pounds that were 3,500 a pound two years ago are 350 a pound right now in DC. It's true. And it's, it's really sad too. Cause like, well, I don't know where this market crash happened. I, I'd like to know like how it's, I get like the economy. Okay. Like I understand how like we're paying more. So like it makes it harder to buy more weed and like the, the like the pound I was talking about, like I, I can't, you know, afford that like every day, but same difference. Like those things are there so that like back in the day when you had to make your own oil. So like if I had to get a pound, I'd have to make my own oil to like because they didn't have extractors and like all the oil they had was kind of like you know what what i mean like mm -hmm. in my part part of my thing but like to me it's just like i remember the days of like blasting out of tubes man and like yeah <laughs> like there you it know, was a I different think, style i i think that there's a clear path um honestly i i was just one of the speakers uh, I opened up uh, day two at the at the Canadero event, and one of the things that I talked about was best practices of uh, coffee shops, uh, uh, cannabis clubs, herb houses around the world. I and, love that. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things I told them, I said, "You're you're in Portugal here. You guys are getting ready to talk about legalizing things. There's some real simple lessons that have already been learned that you can learn from all Big of time. these locations." And you know, one of the first ones, which I, I, I talk about all over the place, is the deli style of selling cannabis versus packaged cannabis. It is yeah. one of the, the curses that has happened to our industry. In I that, love that you brought that up. Oh, love that. Love uh, you know, that. the difference is night and day. It's night and day. And that's also the night and day difference between black market and the legal market. Because when you go to the black market or your gray market in some cases, you're going to get your buds served to you deli style. You're going to be able to go look yep. into somebody's jar and pull out a spear and say, I want Cherry that picking. one. That's it. Cherry picking that and grabbing buds you want. And to me, I think what it is is like, all right, so the businesses I mentioned that went down, I think like to clarify, I think that the craft cannabis is the reason that they went down because they're not craft. They are yeah. not, they're assembly lines. I call them the assembly lines of, of cannabis because they just do the same practice shit. And then like they grow with garbage just to produce yields so that they can sell. Like in yeah. my world, I want to, somebody to tell me like, oh, well, this is an all organic grow. We're, you know, we're doing like living soils or no tills or, you know, the explanation of those things to me is the crap, like crap beer. Okay. Like, okay. Everybody can go buy a beer right now. But if you find those crap beers, which I don't drink, but my friends do, and they have those ca cans of beer, they're like $12, like $20 a can of beer mm -hmm. for like fruit extracts and beer in one can. To me, that's where like the cannabis industry is going to thrive is being that craft cannabis taking everything down to a smaller at least level before you go bigger learn how to grow one plant before you grow five thousand mm -hmm. and make sure they're consistent or else there's no point in like you know getting into the industry or else you're going to get eaten alive because people are going to have more terps and they're going to understand why terps matter versus why you could have stuff that i've seen testing facilities do 50 some percent i'm just like you guys are killing me total cannabinoids is not thc and then it just it gets into misconstruction of information like misinformation is one thing but misconstruction of all this shit is people mm -hmm. constructing these things to be talking about them in a smart fashion but it's not helping anything we're just making yeah. ourselves look bad because we're not actually focusing on the key issues so mm. you know it's away. fascinating because there you're you've got parallel universes here and that you are that that that, that you can tie in with both you know um one is that I see in the future, you know, it, it being completely a boutique market of artists, right? You'll have, you'll have the somas and you'll have the, and there'll be that particular, and there'll be a particular cultivar that, that you know, is, they, is consistent and it's the best. And everybody knows, and knows the process. Yeah. 
And then you have social media. Now you've got here, here's when, one of my favorite quotes, okay? This is interesting, it's an old Japanese quote. Uh, a wise man, uh, uh, a, fool, a fool speaks when he wants to say something. A wise man speaks when he has something to say. I love that. In so when you're classic. dealing when you're dealing with social media, and we know that there's it's content. You got a, a lot of content. You talked about tracking in every four hours and being able to be ready oh, to, yeah. to with another piece, right? Okay. Yep. Um, if you're a true artist, and if you're trying to uh, rise above the the cream, um, and you're working from the concept of being a, a true artist and and only wanting to create the best content when it goes out right oh, yeah rather than ever, okay there's a certain quality and I, I i even like being not a photographer i have to tell photographers sometimes the quality that i need and to explain that i just say hey, look i don't want your content to do bad and it's just true I, I just know that if something's a certain quality like i call it the the deep focus and the deep focus is all it is, is like, you know, if you go on Instagram and you can like, you can push all the way in and it's still fucking clear. And like, if you're on Facebook and like the higher quality photo you start with on, on like, that's why I use Instagram a lot of times is because the photo degrades, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just, it's a wild world in social media, man. Well, and aren't the numbers right now really trending towards the, the stories, <laughs> the live videos that are, you know, the I'm one seeing, minute clips? To me, I'll have to send you my Instagram notes I have because like I've been taking notes on just things I've been seeing and like as much as it is like I don't have a big Instagram and I never will. And mm -hmm. like people always ask me why I don't have myself famous and my brands are. And I think like the main thing is, is like constructing yourself correctly. So at least those those brandings that way, I mean. And I lost track of the question because I got really high. So my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Uh, the. Uh... The, let's see if I kept track of it. We we were we were discussing the uh, um, uh, the content uh, of putting more content out versus uh, quality. Of oh content. yeah, yeah. Oh okay. yeah, I was talking about Instagram. So I found all right. So Instagram, I found is like okay, reels are really big, and the reason reels are really big is Meta is trying to convert like TikTok so that people will come off of TikTok and know that they can get paid on Facebook. Cause like they started this uh, new creator program to drive people to come back because Facebook is losing all these people. Cause like in cannabis, a lot of us are just okay. like, I mean, at least if they're friends of mine, like they've dropped Facebook altogether. Cause it's just, there's too much to learn. And to be honest- You just answered like, the question though. Ding, you already answered the question. Ding, cause <laughs> I've been trying to figure out the, why is it a guy flipping eggs and, and I'm saying a guy flipping eggs. He's actually one of the co-founders of the Tricom Institute. He did a, a one reel where he flipped 12 eggs in a pan oh and he God. got a million, a million hits, a million yeah. uh, views off of the thing. Okay. And there's, I'm trying to understand why, what could skew. Now you answered that question because if Meta is trying to pull that business away from TikTok, then they're going to, to generate. Okay. Now it all makes sense. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's a wild world man like honestly like i've had meetings with facebook's marketing team and their concierge service and like just to have like i have deep conversations about cannabis with them because i'm just like look like you need to be understanding that you can't just hit people on a free platform especially when you're telling them there's a right way to do it but you're not giving them the information it takes to learn from their mistakes and mm -hmm. i said if i was a little kid and this is exactly what i told facebook i was like if i was a little kid and I got in trouble by you all the time. You kept hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. It would be abuse because you would never teach me the correct way to fix the issue. So I'm ah. not getting hit every single day. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that stuff was understood through their team. And that's when they started giving me a lot more permissions and giving me like paid stuff. I mean, that bonus I had, I got to say for the munchies, I thought it was a joke. I was just going to run it Zuckerberg's pocket up as much as I could. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, this guy is not going to pay me. I'm cannabis. There's no way, yeah. you know, uh -huh. and he, and they end up do, doing it. So I think like a lot of it is just understanding that I can blend my content in to my brand. So like, okay, glass porn, it's one that like, it's more cannabis specific. It walks a line. They didn't mm -hmm. give me bonuses for, for glass porn. They mm -hmm. didn't give me any of the monetization other than like, I can have subscribers, but like, that's just pennies. Like if you get like a star, like if you get 
a subscriber and they, they do it through their phone app, you lose 98% of your entire, like the entire money you're going to get. And if you do Whoa. it through the web, you're going to get only tax that like you'll get 70% and they'll get 30%. So it's a, it's like, it's something to where like, I'm, I'm building this, even though they're not giving me the same monetization as my other page. I have a feeling that doing this kind of content with glass showing that like in my world, I found out that glass, all you got to do is just show it from a different angle. So like if it has a bowl on it, just have it to be a clean bowl or like, you know, make it, you know, so you're doing like multiple angles. And I found that like Facebook accepts glass. I can do glass hashtags on Facebook and they don't hit my posts ever. And wow. to me, it's, it's understanding. And I think what it is, I'm, I'm building this normalization for others. So hopefully that, you know, cause a lot of glass shops I've found like even glass artists now, they're seeing their mm -hmm. content hit millions of views and shit like that on my page and going like, man, I need to do Facebook. And I'm mm -hmm. happy to help assist. And like, I, I basically like, if I'm not, not doing a paid feature, like 99% of the time I'm featuring people for free. Yeah. And I how do, do that people, because why not? How, how, do, how, do, how do people get in touch with you? If, uh, let's say that they've got a problem or they've had challenges with Facebook or uh, the, any of those if, if, crisis management, would you call that crisis <laughs> management? <laughs> well it depends it all has to be specific within like my career stuff of how i'm doing it but like if they need help like a lot of it is is like they'll find me like through instagram because like i don't have a lot of channels like if you go on the munchies you can find my phone number it's on there so like i don't okay. mind if people call me because typically i'm trying to just be more informationally because i don't like you said earlier you could die today and what did you give back? I want to leave a legacy behind of some of what I'm learning so that I'm not just that guy that's remembered for doing it. I'm that guy that hopefully opened the door for others to follow behind me as, you know, I'm gone, they're coming through. So I, I just yes. want a community, like, just like my pages. I enjoy the community aspect because, like, I really wanted to see, can I build a community of people that are just heartfelt, loving people? Is like I'll see people with 30 million like 30 million followers on the Food Network, but I'll see like a, a like if they post a photo, look at their insights versus my page, and I, I write those things down, and I have them on this new insight tool Facebook gave me, but I compare myself with the giant ass brands, and there's some weeks where I beat them, and they mm -hmm. have 30 million people, and I only have like on the Munchies I have 400, and. 20,000 people that follow that one and like on the glass porn like 215,000 maybe and like right. these are numbers that people used to think like well I can't do that content man that's going to take me 10 years and now I'm teaching mm -hmm. people that you can do it in two mm -hmm. but I had to be in bed for all those years to be able to do all this shit so you have to have <laughs> lots of time lots of time you gotta have a little time on your hands and be able to put it all down on paper just a bit but at the same time it's fun yeah. How are you feeling now? Because I, you went through lots of, of tribulations with your car accident and your cancer. Uh, How are you doing today? Well, honestly, man, it's it's a struggle, to be honest. Like, to I'm happy and thankful and feel blessed every day that I remember how to do my content and, like, the things I was doing. But to be honest, I think the brands that I created were happened after the wreck. And after mm -hmm. the wreck, like, what it was is I was a passenger in a vehicle and my driver person a guy that was driving me ran a stoplight and I got t-boned by a drunk driver and I don't remember anything because uh they hit the side of my head like it, the car bent in from the bumper and hit my head so hard that I broke my neck in two spots so now I have a cage in here that wasn't mm -hmm. is that was a shit storm but then like the worst part is is like months and almost a year later they found out I have permanent brain damage Mm -hmm. So like I have my temporal lobe is permanently damaged. So I lost 97% of short term memory. So like I just like you saw earlier, like I blamed it on the weed. It was my Ooh. brain. <laughs> so like I, I lose track of conversation and like, but, but weed does, uh, I'll say this weed, you know, as much as like, sometimes I'm a little extra forgetful. I, I can create so much more using this because my migraines I, I have permanent migraines that just are like I have to still take physical medication which you know I get like I'd like to just take meat for everything but you know or take mushrooms or something like that but uh, unfortunately with my brain it's hard to even do psychedelics because I, I, I had one day I tried a microdose just to try to fix some stuff 
and my Facebook had something go wrong and I had a full panic attack. So like I, I go through, I go through manic attacks occasionally, but for what it's worth, like for when people see me like right now, like, yeah, I'm good. I can sit and hang out with my friends and I'm good, but it's just a certain degree of like, cert, like I, I lost the ability to sweat also. So like I can Ooh. sweat, you'll see me sweat, but I can't feel that I'm getting hotter. So like I, I'll all of a sudden start getting like throw up sick. And mm -hmm. that's because of my brain. I, I broke part of my hypothalamus and that's what controls your heat. And like, yeah. you're feeling cooled off. I don't get cooled off. I'll just like sit there and bake until I pass out. <laughs> so it's been an interesting balance, but at the same time, like I dress differently now. I like, I still wear the stoner tops and stuff and all that. But like, if you catch me on most good days, I'm wearing really loud pants. Like I'm talking bright, vibrant colors and like, I, it's just a weird thing, but like I, even my brands, I never had an idea to create this stuff until I smashed my dome really oh, hard, <laughs> you know? And like, it's kind of intriguing to know. Cause like, I mean, I, a lot of people see like my success now and think that I've just been, you know, a rich kid or something like me and the wife, we were homeless for like three years. And then like, you know, like we moved to Denver with a dream and like a thousand dollars or something like 1500 bucks. That's it to yeah. move here. And I had two pairs of shorts and a t-shirt so Good. i think that like it's interesting the journey to see where people came from because like at the end of the day like you know like i, I wear a lot of shiny shit now but if people mm -hmm. knew it back in the early days when you had weed grows and you could afford a diamond ring or something cool you couldn't fucking buy that shit no, you'd be displaying no. out the cops would just be like yeah. i mean you could almost see the cherries and berries in the reflection yeah. <laughs> so oh, it's just so nowadays it's like, I'm just trying after my wrecks and cancer, if anybody ever sees me the way I dress, it's cause like, I, I almost died a few times. I think nowadays I want to live the way I want to live. I want to wear cannabis stuff. I want, that's why I'm teaching. Like I'm working with a new uh, uh, t-shirt maker and we're going to start making some fun shit. Like I want to make like a MacGyver t-shirt, you know, like a guy that's got like a, a pineapple and like a ice pick and yeah. shit, you know, and like on a t-shirt <laughs> gotcha. says you can do it or something like that, you know? 10 different ways to make a bong yeah, and it's not even things that i want to make money on dude i just want this shit so i can wear it that's it man i, I mean I, I helped design a few hoodies last year during my wreck or like the first year of my wreck in 2018 i designed a hoodie with an artist i don't mm -hmm. remember much of it but i did it and it's because i wanted dab clothing and they didn't make it i was like somebody you know, needs to make me dab clothes or i'll know, pay for of... it and like you draw you know it's fascinating because, you know, and, and basically you were able to maintain your, your intellect. You're able to basically work on a, a clean sheet, uh, uh, un, uninhibited. And a little bit. With, 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 a, with a fresh uh, outlook on life and uh, uh, able to, to just start thro throwing it right to the, t the table. It's, it's, you know, you're, you're, you. you're talking about blessed, man. I know it's not been an easy road and I, I, I don't want to yeah. under, yeah. undermine, you know, the, the, the yeah, but I'll tell you this. Is, this, is there any good journeys in life that don't have a bumpy road to get to it? You know, you like this, if it was a smooth shortcut, man, seriously, none of this story shit, none of this stuff would have been created. Like even your shows, man, like, I'm sure yeah. your past in life just made it to be to where Captain Hooter, I'm here to stay. Like I'm yeah. here. That's it. I, I love that. And, and now I got somebody that can guide me on my path in the in the right direction. Uh, oh yeah, man. Well, I feel like if anything, I my teaching is still like I'm still uncomfortable teaching a little bit because like I don't have tons of people that are you know that are out there that are basically using my names oh Hollywood did this because I didn't want that in like the early part my wife had to convince me that she's like I want you to start posting your numbers on Instagram or on Facebook start mm -hmm. posting your monthly like 12 13 million people you're reaching 30 some million you're reaching a month don't do it as like a braggarty thing but do it as a proof that like if anybody doubts you, they can go on your page. And I, 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 I actually under budget my numbers. So I, I believe that mm -hmm. 354 is a little short. So like, mm -hmm. I feel like if people did go calculate my numbers, they'd realize that I'm humbly stating that like, look, I don't want to know my exact numbers, but they're over this amount, you know, and yeah. it's, 
it's way more yeah. humbling i think because like i think if you're like if you're gonna do anything in life you gotta stay humble and hustle hard mm -hmm. I, I had a t-shirt yes. that said that shit and i've been on that for a minute that's exactly and faint heart never wins fair lady you gotta go for it if you want to oh, fuck yeah. around then you can fuck around uh i'm well, i'm honored to say that i just got a message just a moment ago and uh I have one of my next guests who's going to be on next week is Mr. Tommy Chong. Oh and, man, uh, so jelly. My, best, I've my, got, actual, my business partner works with him personally every day and like drives him around all the shows and smokes oh, with gosh. him and shit. And like, I've like, dude, he calls me and he's like, dude, guess who I'm passing a joint to right now. And yeah. I hear Tommy yeah. in the background. I'm like, motherfucker. Like, yeah. I mean, he's, he's actually he's on my pedestal of like, if like being that I'm on a wall with him, Oh my God. I, I would just, uh, to this day, I hope my career ends up somewhere to where I can be in just to like shake his hand on a, on a level of not like a fan girl kind of thing, but like yeah. a respect level. Cause like, yeah. it's just like Cypress Hill. I want to, I want to meet them too, but same difference. Yeah. I don't want somebody to do it for me. You know, I want, I want them to hear about me or something or like we're that level. So mad respect that you're getting Tommy Chong and oh. I'm right after me, like, I've holy been... shit, like badass. He's he's always been one of my idols. Um, he's the, I I have one of the, I have like multiple stories with him. Uh, I will oh, tell please. you the first. I'll just tell you the first part of it, which which uh, is also tied into my first question. I'm going to be asking him. But um, in okay. 1971, my very first concert I ever saw in life was at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas. The opening act was Seals and Crofts. Diamond Girl, do, do. Show to Shine, do, do. Good tunes. Uh, great, great, perfect tune. The, uh, the main act was Cheech and Chong. And oh, they, they performed their album Jelly. live on the stage. And you're you one that remembers it. their album. I told somebody about I, I dated myself saying that the other day. Yeah. But it's so cool. I used to have them on a cassette tape, man. Like, oh, you know, God, I'm so Elephant. jealous right now. You got to be in person, man. Yeah, I I, I still remember them running around as uh, Ralphie and uh, the dogs. Remember when they were the dogs? Yep. Hey, oh, hey, what's up, man? Hey, what that was the funniest shit ever. God. So that was my very first concert in life. Uh, Lucky I, mother, damn. I, and I met him, the first time that I met him, that was the first thing I told him was that story. And I went that's through like, the whole thing. And what, that's a pretty what, cool story, man. I, yeah. Oh my God, I, I, I won't have stories to tell Chong because unfortunately my memory doesn't serve me oh. that way. But like, hopefully I'll have like Cheech with Cheech, I got to, my friends like, hey, you need to come downtown Denver right now to just like meet Cheech. And I was like, okay, like, what do I do? What do I do? So I made a fat sack, all the buds that I've been growing uh -oh. and did this different shit. And I made him a little sampler nug pack. And it wasn't anything big because I, back then I didn't have a lot. So I gave him just, you know, a little bag. And I yeah. saw later on, you know, this was like, I gave it to him and he just thanked me because he had all these photographers and shit going on. I wasn't able to really hear anything from him. But later on, I was at a party and he was there. And he comes yeah. up and he points at me from across the room and I, I walk up and he's just like, you're the fucking guy that gave me that weed. And I'm just yeah. like, yes, <laughs> yes. Like that is so cool. And like, he's doing, he, it's actually funny because I'm actually talking to Cheech's team right now. Cause they're, they're going to do something called Munchichos ooh, and ooh. it's going to be something towards the munchies. And we're talking about a possible collab. So like, ooh. you know, I might be working with Cheech on that. So it could be oh, cool. That would be, I don't know yet. That, that's a natural. Yeah, and just pick 20 different lines. You could do all and just take a flavor. Well, what, see. what he's doing is, of what I heard, it's going to be like the, the Kevin Smith design where they did the uh, movies to where it's like they go to a bar and they put the signs up and it'll say the restaurant for Munchichos. Then they'll pick certain munchies to serve because to me, I get over a thousand, and I'm not kidding, a thousand messages to a hundred calls a week. Are you a restaurant and when can I come visit? And I don't Ooh. have it listed that I'm a restaurant. I have it listed that I'm a blogger slash media news company. And it's been that way since the get go. But mm -hmm. everybody thinks I'm a restaurant. And mm -hmm. I, to this day, said that if I did a ghost kitchen and found some of these people that were chefs doing some of this food, 
we Damn. could do it in each different area because like I said, I don't, it's not me I'm worried about. I, I try to highlight others. So why not grab chefs, go to like, you know, like Virginia and grab their people. And, you know, it Dude. would just be a fun show, you know? Yeah. Get to work. The I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> I, and then plus, I, I'm that, trying to think if go. Because imagine Munchichos comes into town and we, we splice the community. You splice cannabis with a little bit of food. And I think that that's how it's got to be. Like, that's how normalizing it is. Because most people won't smoke weed, but they'll eat an edible because they blended it with something they like. You know, something right. that's normal. So that's how my, my, I guess it's kind of fun to see. Like, I can blend subjects, you know, but I don't post anything cannabis on the munchies. And I have chefs that are like, oh, dude, I could do this. But in the future of things, if cannabis goes and Facebook loosens up, you better believe it. I'm going to be featuring all kinds of stuff like that. And it's yeah. just, it's all about the premise. You build it correctly and then you can run your own content through. Cause like I said, you go and find hashtags, but I use my own content. Sometimes I'll flip my own photos on there. I'll do my own videos of glass. And I actually just got invited to like the biggest glass show in, in like the entire U S and it's private. And I've been trying to get into it forever. Ooh. So, dude, there's there's uh, places in uh, Barcelona. Uh, I think there's HQ. I think it's HQ. There's there's a couple of uh, uh, more than one that have uh, glass art galleries uh, inside inside the 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 clubs. So you can walk in, and I mean, there are some of the most stunning pieces. I remember the 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 last time I was in one, that thing went on for there there had to be three, four, five hundred different multi thousand dollar rigs all along the walls and they were just beautiful all glass behind them and mirrors i mean so that it just it stood out like it was a piece of jewelry each one well it sounds oh. like some like your clubs that you have there like uh, some of the clubs in denver in my early days in like eight years i think it's like eight nine years ago here um but like the early clubs were based just like that man they actually you'd go into the club and it'd be like a house design and like they you know, had certain things you could get at the bar, you know, and then you could go outside and they had glass blowers live blowing mm. heady shit. And to mm. me, like, it wasn't like we had you Sheen and, you know, like Jerome Bakers and stuff, but still it was a lot of those kind of like, you could get out and see how this stuff was made. I never knew how bongs mm. were made until mm. I met Jerome or Jason, which I, I got to say him using that name. I forever thought Jerome Baker that was his name and then yeah. it's like no he had you couldn't say you made bongs back in the day because look at tommy tommy went to jail for putting yeah. his name on a bong Chong's and it's, but he still but that's my favorite part tommy chong didn't give up yeah. he's, he's he's kept doing his stuff he didn't you know bow down to the, the system and you know he's still out there like i don't know if you saw but he has this fucking green bus that he dropped like they have that fucking the, the van from the movie up in smoke and i mean yeah. that brings back so much and like i heard people have been smoking in it yeah not me oh. but i've heard people have yeah. been smoking allegedly thank legendary. goodness oh my god that's my so friend... cool though and i'm so i gotta say it's an honor to be on your show and like you know you got tommy right next because like i like i said i don't get many i don't get awards like because most of the people that do those shows i don't think they like me but yeah. personally i feel like that's why i, I... created brands you know, mm. I, I like to no, be no. behind a brand. Yeah, but it, your 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 role in what you're doing here is important. And well, yeah, and plus it's like, like I'm not about awards, anyways. Like that's not my goal. If I was trying to structure that, I'm sure I could get people to like nominate me and all that stuff. But I think like my main goals is I'd rather get other people highlighted. Mm -hmm. So like you know, I can keep my. I feel like it keeps my clout. I say like it's a cloudy day, like with a T, cloudy day. <laughs> because like a lot of that stuff gets pretty serious and me like i i try to steer steer towards less you know so like my face mm. i have friends that are mad because i used to do live facebook facebook feeds like every day before my wreck and then afterwards like i don't feel as confident to do them mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. like i lose train of thought but mm -hmm. same difference i still have people today they're like man i wish you'd be on more but now my brands i see them as that lean like if i can convince facebook to pay me maybe i can convince them that this is a normal subject and maybe he'll open the doors for my other friends behind me and we can get yes. some other content online that deserves to be there for educational purposes period yes, education I... and entertainment i get entertainment all day long by listening to shows like yours and i mean honestly like i just heard about your show yesterday from bobby but i'll be like you're on my list now because like i there's not <laughs> many podcasts that do 
content about cannabis, the real heart subject. Instead, they're all like about this, this new, I don't know what this is, the new. Yeah, well, cycle. you know, the, for, here's the thing. I'm trying to find, like, I, I picked off a couple of the, the freedom fighters, you know, Adam Brooke that does the, the hemp fest out in, uh, out in Michigan and, um, uh, you know, and, and, and Captain Joint, who just was so, it was, it pulled at my heartstrings doing that interview with him. This guy who had all the positive vibes and all the positive going in all the right directions. And then bam, as soon as the cops start hitting him and they just never let up. And here's this guy now. And, you know, he's still fighting. He's still That's fighting. Good the energy. Yeah. That's that man, because he's true heroes don't wear capes. Yes. That guy exactly. is, a, is a hero. Yeah. And will not ever surrender. Never. He'll never give up. And it's, uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, I, I, I love all of that. And I'm going to ask you a same question that I've asked almost all of these other uh, OGs, uh, because I know that there's at least one great, amazing story of the party, the, the one time, the, the one most incredible, it was right after this show, it was at this concert, you got a chance to meet, uh, you know, do you have one of those stories of something that uh, you could you, you could legally uh, recreate? Yeah. I know you don't I, have a lot of that. <laughs> I'd say but, so. Uh, I'd have to say so. I mean, there's there's somebody I look up to that I did get to meet, and I actually got to hang around with them and smoke and like you know kick it. But um, yeah. I was all right. So there was this. It's called the Connoisseur Cup, and it's like it's kind of a mix between legal and black market cup because. You know, like they're blind, you know, they like a lot of these cups nowadays, I uh, like high times, like what they're doing right now, like they're being a little more representative and, you know, but they do still show the brands and such. So I do still mm -hmm. like these secret cups, you know, I love mm -hmm. those. I mean, yeah. so yeah. to me, I was at the secret cup and I got asked to, to judge because um, the, the owner, Jason Bezozo, he was just it's such an honorable guy to just be like, hey, man, like I want you to judge. I was blown away. It's like, I like, like the show. I don't think I, you know, deserve some of that attention. Cause like, I just, I'm behind the scenes. So uh, mm -hmm. I got to do this show. And I remember like, um, we were back in the VIP section and like, um, what's his name? Damn. I can't believe I forgot his name. Um, shit. That's my problem. I got all ah, the story details, there you but go. I'll lose the name, but, um, shit. Oh, fucking A. I can't remember his name. I, I'm going to hate myself for that. Is he, but he, he was musician, a musician, rap artist. actor? A rap he, was artist. A, he was a musician, rap artist. Uh, he's a, what's your name, man? Snoop Dogg? Damn. No, no, it wasn't Snoop Dogg. It was a guy, he's, he's, a, he's a cannabis-only rapper. So he's a black guy, cannabis-only rapper. Um, he's like in all the... Like, no. And I, I hate that I have to go to script eyes to like think of him because like I fucking hate that, but because like that's my memory. I just I have holes that are in certain parts, and I I can't remember. Um, but shit, I have okay. like I'll send you a video after the show of his. Uh, okay. I had a set where I was in like he was right in front of me, and like I was like within five people that got a personal set done by this man. And let's just say that you know he signed my slab. This was back in the day when I was extracting. Oh. I remember he signed my slab. I'm trying to think of his name, but like, yeah, it was just a super cool moment to meet like a, an idol of mine that he was somebody that he doesn't rap about anything else but weed, you know, like that's mm -hmm. his thing. It's not, it wasn't Afro man. And, but like, it's going to blow me away when I actually catch it, but <laughs> just shit. But yeah, at the end of the day, like it was a good, it was like one of those moments where I was around all these highlighted stars, like even Lil Flip was there. And I found even like Lil Flip was kind of cool for the fact that it wasn't the guy, but it was another guy that was there. And Method I man. passed him. Let's just say that like the whole time I was there, I was trying to get some of these celebrities to smoke with me and they wouldn't do it. And, you know, it was about they'd smoke their own and they'd have to see how it was rolled before they'd hit it. Well, Lil Flip, I rolled up this fucking fat ass like blunt and just started toasting it. And all of a sudden he just is looking at me and I'm just like kind of uncomfortable because <laughs> he's staring at me. And I'm just like, fuck. And then he like, he pulls his security guy or his like his concierge guy in and he goes, hey, fucking talk to that guy. I want to smoke that right now. Bring him over. <laughs> so I sit and little flip and he's painting. Like he's got like a paintbrush 
and he's painting like this little painting and shit because he's like in his little vip area before he goes on and like okay. he, he t- i passed okay. my blood to him and he didn't give it back and he starts putting the ash in his painting he just starts oh. putting the ash of my blunt in his painting for like this og remembrance of this joint and i've been told oh. that he still has this painting that he was putting all this this ash work into because i never got that blunt back i it wasn't a share moment it was a i gotta roll myself another one which i already had rolled and i was smoking my own but yeah he took my blunt and he never hit the ground like the man just literally it smoked all the way until it was wow. out and to me okay, that, that's got, a big up that, that was i got a big some up, guesses but... i've got some guesses uh okay. Wiz nope uh corrupts nope uh method man red nope. man red man oh kid i Coody. met method man but not nope what was the last Coody. one uh kid cootie no not kid cutty I swear not, we can. Not, I, we're gonna get burner, this. Somebody's gonna not, like see this burner. and be like, "Dude, I'm gonna get this." Not I'm not burner. trying to do this to cause any any commotion either in the in the comments. But uh, if y'all can figure LeBron. it out, I'll send you a free cannabis TV hat. I swear, I'll send you one of these. Like wait, full on. Like if you ghost, figure out wait, who I'm talking about. Ghostface Killer. No. No. Oh, okay. Uh, Coke La Rock. He's an older rapper, so he's he's like an an older and he's bald, and I'm just trying to. Damn, and I don't want to guess it now because I want somebody else okay. to be able to get okay. that. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we're definitely going to get the comments now, so that we everybody's going to be well, guessing. I just gave you a good run of. of you did, you people. did, and like this is one that like <laughs> as soon as like you get it, like you're going to be like, oh, dude, he's old school, man. I know him. Like, oh yeah. What. Devin the dude, the wife just peeked in and gave me the Devin number. the Devin dude. The oh my dude. god. Okay. Devin the dude. Oh, and I'm sorry, Devin. It took me so long. <laughs> Jesus. Devin the dude. Hey, but look at the names that were brought up with his name and being the ultimate uh, winner there. He's got to be pretty thrilled with that too. You know, yeah, he was one too. that, like I said, he's somebody that, like, when I met him, like, I looked up to him and I just like I listened to his music and I used to see his sets and. I have a personal set on my phone now that just will never leave. And it's him just uh-huh. rapping about the connoisseur cup. And like, he even like throws in little parts about how I got him fucking high. And, you know, and that's been my MO from the day one is like, I don't really care about really being on camera smoking with any celebrities, but yeah. I want to get some weed into their presence so that maybe yes. they're going to remember that guy. I'm like Cheech and be like that guy. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. I don't even need, need a name. Just like, Hey, that guy. Like, fuck it, that Hollywood. Guy. Like, if I dig my nickname, it's like it's easier to remember than my real name. <laughs> I think that people are going to start seeing you a lot more often now, and uh, uh, I'm I'm honored that you were able to take the time here and give us a little dip into your world. It's it's so amazing to me, and uh, I'm honored again to uh, be able to sit here and 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 talk about all of this magic that you're creating. I'm excited again. They know everybody knows how to get in touch with you now, right? Um, yep. I feel like okay, if we, they go to the munchies, all you got to do is look up uh, follow the munchies on Facebook because I feel like specifics. I like to CEO hash work, you know, like that kind of stuff works really well. So like finding that thing. But if you just do follow glass porn or follow the munchies and then the munchies has my phone number. I'm pretty sure glass porn has my phone number as well. Um, it has my emails, uh, phone numbers, just like shoot me like a text or something and be like, hey, like, but if anything, you can call me and I'm not going to be upset because i have my phone number on there for a purpose because uh, i'm disabled so i'd like to like somehow make money from like maybe teaching one day but like at the other point i don't want to just put myself out there and be like yeah i'm the best there is i'd like people to come into me on that level to where they see what i do and they they see what my value is and then they kind of come into my world and then like maybe want to work with me so like restaurants <laughs> i'll share their food and may, I, like the other day i hit 1.5 million people in 24 hours on on some tacos and that restaurant is a small business but they had a line around the building and they called me like bro anytime you come in free food i'm just like i'm I'm gonna pay and i'm not gonna tell you who i am because i don't have pictures of myself so i can roll in there anytime i want before i want to tell them and then after i showed my value man i roll out now i got people that are paying me for food you know placements and like features so i think a lot of it is just know your worth stick your lane and 
never let anybody tell you that you're going to be a failure because you're always going to be better off in your world and in theirs. Wow. Words to live by. My friend, thank you so much. Welcome back, everyone. Hey, you ready to take a ride? Let's take a ride. Oh, shit. Oh, um, hey, yeah, I'm clean. Anybody got any weed on? Okay, I think we're good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We're good. Hi. Access denied. Denied? What? Um, Identify yourself. Um, hey, man. I appreciate all this, but, uh, you think, can I get you guys to weed or, uh, can we talk about this a little bit? Okay, we're out of here. Thank you, babe. Appreciate it. I didn't mean to call you babe. That was very sick. Killed me. Call her babe. Fuck this wrong. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter, far out, man.